Recently I presented you the Megaplex minigame console that I made. It had already a ton of features including sound and uh, super fast graphics. However the Tencent microcontroller had a slight disadvantage. It doesn't have native USB so this was emulated and only limited to low speed which doesn't support stuff like mass storage and so on. On top of that I only had one pin to read the buttons and I messed up the resistor letter there and it was really difficult to read the buttons with the analog pin. Especially as the 240 LEDs were really messing with the power line of the device. Since I shared two pins between the buttons, the sound and the USB D plus D minus, I had even this little switch in the center to switch between those options. So I mentioned last time already that I would like to switch to a new microcontroller which is slightly more expensive but supports native full speed USB, has more flash, RAM and 28 pins. So I got the development boards and the bare ICs of the CH32X35 from AliExpress and started testing them on stream. We're live, are we? Yes. Since I want this little device to act as a mass storage so you are able to just drag and drop the games on that as files. I tried to implement that first on the dev board. The big brother of this RISC-V from WCH, the 203, already has the mass storage device implemented in the SDK as an example. But for this one, this example wasn't present. Probably because there is not much internal flash. But we started to port this example more or less successfully while waiting for the new design to be manufactured and shipped to me. It's more or less in an alpha state right now. Sometimes it drops strange errors, but I was able to store a file already on that. The redesign of the PCB was quite straightforward. Although the QFN package is slightly bigger than the other one, just having more pins gets rid of this huge switch in the center, so we even have more space at the end. I could also remove this whole resistor ladder because each of the buttons have their own pins now. So that problem is also solved now. At the end we even had a spare pin. I decided to put a light dependent resistor on there. It's a simple circuit, you just build a voltage divider with this LDR in there and measure with an analog pin. So now we can measure the ambient light or even use it as a wireless light transmission data interface. But more on this idea another time. So with the redesign finished, I just submitted it to JLC PCB again, which is also today's sponsor. They are my go-to PCB manufacturer for assemblies. I not only get any PCB color I want, but the assembly is insanely fast and affordable. There is not even a lead time to gather the components since they are affiliated with LCSC and I can keep my stock reserved as mentioned before. The online tools make it really easy to order your assembly and fix any issues. The support is also really proactive. You get always a message asking you for a decision if there is something unsure. As they are also offering 3D printing right now, I wanted to try their service and started to design a case in Fusion. I'm not that proficient in Fusion, but alright, yeah, here you go. So you people don't complain that I'm still using Blender. I uploaded it to JLC and was really surprised about the low pricing. With Euro package shipping and the coupons, it's really a no-brainer and you should try it too. The assembled boards arrived first and I'm really happy that I don't have to place all the 240 LEDs myself. As you can see you can leave parts unpopulated like the microcontroller here. The chip was so new it wasn't available to LCSC yet. So I decided I will place it myself. And that can be done really in a few minutes. The 3D printed cases arrived a day later. Oh, wow! I immediately discovered that I made a slight mistake in picking that impact proof but slightly flexible material. The retainers won't keep together like that. 
so I would probably have to glue it. Unfortunately, I also made a few mistakes in the design. I didn't remove this hole here, so I have now a pillar sticking out. And the worst part is that I forgot the USB Bus. port on the bottom and the slit for the switch. Oh well. Oh no. A few moments later. Yeah, I think I need a new iteration. I will probably try to put it together from multiple parts in opaque and transparent materials. But back to the hardware, so did the device work? I don't have any programmer pins exposed on this board, but it supports a strange method to program it. Plugging it in with the USB D+, connected to VCC for a second, puts the microcontroller in a programming mode and the WCH ISP tool will upload the firmware automatically. It's a little strange and cumbersome to mess with that. A button might be better in that case. But oh well, I didn't know when designing it. But a more convenient way would be to have this mess storage working. My plans to be honest with this device and any other game console that I developed and will develop are different. Currently I'm reinventing the wheel every single time I use a new microcontroller and write a firmware from scratch. That includes the snake games and so on. My plans are to write an open source lightweight interpreter that runs the same bytecode on any processor. Oh well, you probably think that's the same what Java, C Sharp and Python do. But putting MicroPython on a device with 20 kilobytes of SRAM will be very challenging. So actually last week on stream, I just developed a new assembly language, including a web-based IDE, a compiler and even an emulator that runs the bytecode, and that within one stream. You would be surprised how easy that is. Yes, the code is running! The code is running! Web safe colors. <laughs> it was too fast. That's cool. Okay, now you write the games. I, I see you tomorrow. <laughs> Although it is in the alpha stages, I must admit the IDE is already now better than Arduino was for the most time in the past. <laughs> for instance, it doesn't force spaces instead of tabs on you. <laughs> the language definition might also change, but it's all open source. You can check out the repository. I got also the first contributions from Life in Cycling already. Guess what it was? Here we go. This never gets old. And we have the first code, a running rickroll. <laughs> with color cycling with the background color. And this is the disassembly for it. To prove that the assembler is quite capable already, my challenge was to implement Game of Life that runs in the browser and also on the microcontroller already. Sweet! Game of Life implemented. Now we need to fix our, our uh, emulator and run it on the device. And after a few debugging hours, it actually works on the device as well. If you're interested in the design considerations of this language and how it works, please subscribe. I will follow up on that. But that should be it for this week. Thank you for watching. Please also check out my live channel on YouTube or on Twitch. Thanks to JLCPCB for sponsoring this video. And big thanks to all my supporters. Your contributions are really helpful. I see you next time. Bye.